In this video, I will be discussing the most underrated proof for transubstantiation from the Bible. But first let's talk about transubstantiation. To talk about transubstantiation, we must know what the Eucharist is. Catechism of the Catholic Church, paragraph 1333 says, The Eucharist is, quote, the bread and wine that by the words of Christ and the invocation of the Holy Spirit becomes Christ's body and blood. End quote. So the Eucharist is the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus Christ under the appearance of bread and wine. So what is transubstantiation? Catechism of the Catholic Church, paragraph 1376 says, quote, The Council of Trent summarizes the Catholic faith by declaring, Because Christ our Redeemer said that it was truly his body that he was offering under the species of bread, it has always been the conviction of the Church of God. And this Holy Council now declares again, that by the consecration of the bread and wine, there takes place a change of the whole substance of the bread into the substance of the body of Christ our Lord, and of the whole substance of the wine into the substance of his blood. This change the Holy Catholic Church has fittingly and properly called transubstantiation. But you might respond and say, how is it Jesus Christ if it looks like bread and wine? We believe the accidents or appearances of bread and wine remain, but it transforms into the substance of Christ, and he is really present in the Eucharist. We can only know this by faith alone by trusting the words of Jesus Christ and his church, which is rational given the motives of credibility. You now might ask, where is this teaching in the Bible? Most Catholics know of John chapter 6 and 1 Corinthians chapter 11. These are great proofs for our teaching on the Eucharist. But did you know there is proof for transubstantiation in the Lord's Prayer? We will be discussing how the Lord's Prayer proves transubstantiation. In the Our Father, we say, give us this day our daily bread. The term for daily in Greek is epiousion, which literally means beyond substance or super substantial bread as epi means super or beyond, and usion means substance. So in the prayer the Lord Jesus gave us, we asked for the super substantial bread, aka the Eucharist. This matches perfectly with the doctrine of transubstantiation, as the Eucharist is beyond the substance of bread, it's a substance of Christ. In fact, the word epiousion is used three times in the entire Greek language, twice in the New Testament, both recalling the same event in Matthew 6.11 and Luke 11.3, and once in the Didache, referencing the use in the Gospels. So it is a unique word that was made up by the apostles to communicate a supernatural truth. Nowhere else in the entire language is this word found. They had to invent a new word to explain what type of bread the Lord Jesus Christ was talking about. Catechism of the Catholic Church, paragraph 2837 says, Daily, epiousios, occurs nowhere else in the New Testament. Taken in a temporal sense, this word is pedagogical repetition of this day, to confirm us in trust without reservation. Taken in the qualitative sense, it signifies what is necessary for life, and more broadly, everything sufficient for subsistence. Taken literally, epiousios, super essential, it refers directly to the bread of life, the body of Christ, the medicine of immortality, without which we have no life within us. Finally, in this connection, its heavenly meaning is evident. This day is the day of the Lord, the day of the feast of the kingdom, anticipated in the Eucharist that is already the foretaste of the kingdom to come. For this reason, it is fitting for the Eucharistic liturgy to be celebrated each day. Now some argue that epiousion does not mean super substantial and that it merely means daily. Well here is why epiousion should not just mean daily. The term daily is used other times in the New Testament. When daily is used other times, the Greek word is hemera. So St. Matthew and St. Luke were trying to communicate something more with the term epiousion. They had to invent a new word. Otherwise, they would simply use the term Himera, like the other usages. Furthermore, the Church Fathers teach that Matthew 6.11 is about the Eucharist, vindicating our read of Epiusion. In St. Jerome's translation of the Bible into Latin, also known as the Vulgate, St. Jerome translates Matthew 6.11 as, Give us this day our supersubstantial bread, clearly affirming the doctrine of transubstantiation. Early Christians followed this translation and believed Matthew 6.11 was referring to the Eucharist. St. Cyprian of Carthage is a saint living from 210 to 258 AD. In Treatise 418 he says, quote, As the prayer goes forward, we ask and say, Give us this day our daily bread. And this may be understood both spiritually and literally, because either way of understanding it is rich in divine usefulness to our salvation. For Christ is the bread of life, and this bread does not belong to all men, but it is ours. And according as we say, Our Father, because he is the Father of those who understand and believe, so also we call it our bread, because Christ is the bread of those who are in union with his body. And we ask that this bread should be given to us daily, that we who are in Christ and daily receive the Eucharist for the food of salvation." End quote. So St. Cyprian sees the daily bread in the Lord's Prayer as referring to the Eucharist. St. Augustine of Hippo is a saint living from 354 to 430 AD. In Sermon 9 on the New Testament 6, he says, quote, Give us this day our daily bread comes next in the prayer. Whether we ask here of the Father's support necessary for the body, by bread signifying whatever is needful for us, or whether we understand that daily bread which you are soon to receive from the altar, well it is that we pray that he should give us. For because it is not bread for the body, it is not on the account not bread for the soul, 
But when this life shall have passed away, we shall neither seek that bread which hunger seeks, nor shall we have to receive the sacrament of the altar, because we shall be there with Christ, whose body we do now receive." End quote. Clearly, St. Augustine sees daily bread in the Lord's Prayer can refer to the Holy Eucharist, which is Christ's body. It can also refer to daily need. And in Sermons on Selected Lessons in the New Testament, Sermon 8, St. Augustine says, quote, Again, this is a very good sense of, Give us this day our daily bread, thy Eucharist, our daily food. St. Ambrose of Milan is a saint living from 339 to 397 AD. In Exposition of the Christian Faith, Book 3, Chapter 15, 127, he says, quote, For he who is, and is forever, is God, and therefore the divine substance, abiding everlastingly, is called usia. Bread is epiousion, because taking the substance of abiding power from the substance of the word, it supplies this to heart and soul. For it is written, and bread strengthens man's heart. End quote. St. Ambrose is interpreting epiousion as supersubstantial and applying it to the substance of abiding power from the substance of the word. St. John Cassian is a saint living from 360 to 435 AD. In his work, Conferences, Conference 9, Chapter 21, he says, quote, Next, give us this day our daily bread, which is epiousion, i.e. supersubstantial, which another evangelist calls daily. The former indicates the quality of its nobility and substance in virtue of which it is above all substances and the loftiness of its grandeur and holiness exceeds all creatures, while the latter intimates the purpose of its use and value. For where it says daily, it shows that without it, we cannot live a spiritual life for a single day. Where it says today, it shows that it must be received daily and that yesterday's supply of it is not enough." End quote. Clearly, St. John Cassian sees epiousion as referring to supersubstantial and says that the Eucharist is above all other substances since it is the substance of Christ who is God, directly proving transubstantiation. St. Jerome is a saint living from 342 to 420 AD. In St. Thomas Aquinas' Catina Aria, he is quoted saying, quote, We may also interpret the word supersubstantialis, otherwise as that which is above all other substances and more excellent than all creatures, to wit, the body of the Lord. End quote. Theophylact of Ockrid is venerated in the Eastern Orthodox Church, and he lived from 1050 to 1107 AD. In the explanation by Blessed Theophylact of the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, he says, quote, Give us this day our daily bread. By the word daily, he means what is sufficient for our existence, our essence, and our sustenance. Thus he teaches us not to worry about tomorrow. Bread for our essence is also the body of Christ of which we pray that we may partake without condemnation." End quote. So we see that the fathers agree that Matthew 6, 11 is about the Holy Eucharist, showing that the epiousion is referring to supersubstantial bread that becomes the body of Christ. Scripture and tradition point to the doctrine of transubstantiation, vindicating the claims of the Holy Catholic Church, outside of which there is no salvation. Those who deny the real presence somehow just have to say that all of this is a coincidence. Do you think it's a coincidence that the real presence was taught by the very disciples of the apostles up until the Reformation by the Church Fathers, plus the Bible has a phrase that literally translates to supersubstantial bread, and that Christ was born in Bethlehem, the house of bread, in a manger, a place where an was eaten? Furthermore, the supersubstantial bread is included in the Lord's Prayer, which we daily recite, showing the importance of the doctrine of transubstantiation and how it's central to the Christian faith. Here are some links to the images used in this video. Please like and subscribe, share this video on Discord and Twitter, and follow at Catholic Duong on Twitter. Now here's a montage of me playing Krunker. The song used is Good Kid's cover of the song from the start. Don't you notice how I get quiet when there's no one else around? Me and you in awkward silence. Don't you dare look at me that way. I don't need reminders of that you don't feel the same. Oh, the bird. What's a girl to do?